Hey there, Tim and them. This is Jeff. I'm talking to you from, uh, well, our kitchen. And it's a Thursday afternoon, and we're getting ready to make a gumbo that we're going to bring to our Christmas party this weekend. Um, so what we thought we'd do was we'd make this our recipe minute for the week. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead and enjoy the content, y'all. Uh, this is a uh, this is really simple gumbo, so there's nothing, like, earth-shattering going on here. So, uh, on the one hand, you're probably not going to learn a whole lot new that if you already know how to do this. On the other hand, it's, uh, you know, it's really easy. So, let me just show you what we're going to be working with. Uh, this is obviously our uh, trusty cast iron pot. I'll come back over here. You can see that we're already chopping up our onion, celery, bell pepper. Uh, some garlic's going to go in there in a little bit. And uh, again, it's really simple. We've got some stuff defrosting in the sink. Um, just some regular... Uh, chicken and andouille it doesn't really matter what brand I actually just we just wanted the cheapest shit we could get this week um, And then obviously there's like a pound and a half of okra that's gonna be chopped up later and Really that's all we're gonna start we're gonna be working with today. So uh, in a few minutes uh, We'll uh, get started with this and uh, see how it goes Anyway uh... Something that I, I wanted to point out about this is that, you know, all we're doing here is making a gumbo. We're pretty sure most of uh, the wide world of Tim and M already know how to do this. Uh, so don't expect this to be, uh, you know, a super instructional video. We're not really condescending to anyone. We're not pretending that you guys don't know what you're doing. Uh, we know you guys. Y'all are smarter than we are anyway. So, yeah, we don't, we don't do that here. But what I was thinking was that in the entire history of the segment on the Hunker Downcast known as the so-called Recipe Minute, I don't think that we've ever achieved a recipe explication within the space of one actual minute. Can we do that today? Well, let's find out. Jeff, how do you go about making a gumbo in a minute? Uh, well, the answer is obviously you don't. You cheat. Um, and the way, best way to cheat is to eliminate from your one minute all of your prep time. And prep time actually, for me especially, because I putter around a lot, uh, not to mention fucking around with this camera here, I, uh, I've got, I've, I've been chopping stuff and setting things up for, like, I guess maybe about an hour and a half now. Uh, none of that counts. We're not putting that in our minute. Uh, the prep is already done. You can see we've got the uh, chopped up vegetables here. There's our okra in the sink. And the other part of prep that we're definitely not counting is browning things. So here, here we have our meat that needs to be brown. Um, I'm going to brown the sausage. Uh, you can see in this bowl I've got uh, some chopped up chicken thighs. Uh, usually, uh, or often, you, when you do this, you have like whole chicken parts. Uh, that's really good to brown in the pot because you get the chicken grease off of them and everything. In this case, these are boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Um, there's not a whole lot to be gained, at least in the pot, from browning them ahead of time. They're going to cook in the gumbo anyway. So what I did instead is I just chopped them up, and you can see there they're already seasoned a little bit. I've got um, red pepper, black pepper, white pepper, salt, uh, some uh, throw little tonies in there, some garlic powder and stuff like that. And uh, that's actually going to go back in the fridge in a minute. But in the meantime, we've got the sausage, and that is definitely about to get browned up in the pot. Um, so what we do is we're going to stir this around, let it get a little dark, maybe throw a little bit of uh, grease out of it, and render it into the pot. And then when that's done, we'll get ready to make our roux. Count in a minute? Uh, I mean, it can't possibly, right? Like, just... I'm, this is going to take hours. Well, not hours. It's going to take a long time to make. Uh, I've got here in this pot the remnants of that sausage, about a stick of butter, and I'm just dumping flour in here. People always ask, well, how much how much flour do you need in the roux? How thick does your roux need to be? And I don't fucking know. Nobody knows. It's just, it's whatever you do at the time. Like, I don't, did y'all see how much I put in there? I have no idea. This is going to be kind of thick, probably. Anyway, um, 
yeah, look at that. Ooh, wow, that's extremely thick. So what's going to happen is it's going to, it's going to, it's going to congeal, and then I'm going to cook it for a little while, and it's going to loosen up. But that's going to take a long time. So uh, y'all uh, sit tight. This is, we're not going to count this in a minute. Uh, we'll check in in a minute. In a, we'll check in in a few minutes. So uh, this week, if you're watching Baton Rouge, you know the uh, Republicans on the Revenue Estimating Conference have uh, tried to jam uh, another thumb in the budget. Um, their uh, their new thing this year is they're pretending that the budget surplus that was created painstakingly throughout a series of sessions and special sessions this year doesn't actually exist. Um, you know, there's ways to tease out revenue estimates. Um, a lot of things in Louisiana ba are based on the price of oil, which, as you know, doesn't always go up. So it's possible that the current forecasted revenue for next year uh, will be less than it is. And uh, because of that, Taylor Barras and Cameron Henry have decided that they aren't too keen on uh, jumping on the governor's spending priorities for next year. Um, it's basically, you know, because they couldn't cause a budget crisis last year, they're just going to make one up out of whole cloth now by diddling with the revenue estimates. Anyway, uh, it's it's got some implications for next year for things the governor wants to do, including like raising teacher pay. Um, and there's another story in the Advocate this morning about um, the uh, dire need to fund uh, public defenders, not only in Baton Rouge but also all across the state. So uh, you know, it's not like there's not a dire need for the money, um, but you know that's the kind of the game they play right now. Anyway, this morning. I was looking at this on Twitter, and the governor was putting out a series of tweets that kind of explain this to people a little bit. Um, and his communications director had to throw in this little condescending thing about how, like, well, you know, take a look at this important thread from the governor about uh, this revenue, referring to the revenue estimating conference, this, this committee that you probably don't know about. Which, again, is... I don't know how to react to that. I just think that it's 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 really condescending. It's a it's the sort of thing that's in the paper all the time. Anybody who pays even a modicum of attention understands what the REC is. And it, when even you know the governor's side gets out and wants to condescend to people about what they do and don't know, it really gets on my nerves. Anyway, we don't do that here. Like we said before, we're just making a gumbo. We're not trying to teach you how to make a gumbo. You guys know how to do this. Um, I'm sitting here stirring this roux, and y'all know how to do this. I'm not going to say too much more about it. Uh, we'll check in again in a few minutes when it gets a little bit darker. I wasn't sure about this a couple weeks ago, but I kind of think, kind of think the Saints are going to hold on to that home field advantage. I mean, Carolina's like falling apart, right? Hey, I think, I think we're about ready here. So this is really what we wanted to, to capture on film because, you know, everyone loves to look at things that they can't smell, even though, there we go. The roux is all done. We dumped all of our seasoning vegetables into the roux. And we're just going to stir that together. And let everything cook in there. Uh, everybody knows the roux is extremely hot. You really can turn the fire all the way down or even off at this point. And just let the residual heat packed up in the flour and butter there to just cook the hell out of these vegetables. And that's going to take a little while. Now, does that mean that it's time to start the recipe minute? Mm, not exactly. Uh, I think instead, let's, uh, let's do this. But, um, you know, most of the time, if you're really trying to make something with some flavor in it, you're going to want to make a stock ahead of time. Uh, you know, 
Uh, on Thanksgiving, everybody likes to take the turkey carcass and boil it up and make a stock out of that. Um, you can also do it the cheap way. Uh, you know, sometimes you can put like just like a little bit of um, bouillon cube in your water and cook, boil that up real quick. I don't have a problem with that. You can buy some at the store uh, in a can or in those little boxes. Um, I happen to have here uh, a freezer full of stock that we've made over the years. Um, I actually don't know what this is. So we're just going to find out. So uh, while the uh, while we're waiting for the stock to heat up, the mystery stock, I I'm pretty sure it's turkey stock from a couple months back. Uh, It'll be fine. Uh, what we're doing in the meantime is I'm already starting to season the, uh, you know, the vegetables in the roux with a little bit of like white pepper, red pepper. That's a lot of thyme, uh, some pepper, some other things. Um, one of the things that I've started to put into my gumbo in the last few years is a little dash of Chinese five spice. Um, I think that that's what they used to put in the Stella gumbo. I'm not really sure about that, but it's got a little hint of, uh, you know, star anise in it. And I don't know, it just, it's just, it's something to have in the background. I always like it. Anyway, so usually what I'll do is uh, I'll just keep adding, adding more of those same two or three different seasonings as we cook it. Um, but, you know, start now while you're sauteing your vegetables. Yeah, you know what? Uh, throw a little bay leaf in there too. That'll help. Um, all right, guys, it's time to get started for real. Uh, this is where we go into our reheated turkey stock and start dumping it up in your pot. And you know, it, it's starting it's starting to feel like maybe that might have been shrimp stock. Uh, it, it doesn't matter, it's fine. Um, oh, the clock's running. Let's see. Uh, so the next thing we need to do now that the pot's incorporated with stock is, uh, maybe turn that off. Um, let's dump in their sausages. Ah! Uh, um, what else do we need here? Oh, there's our chicken. And actually, we're going to let that cook for a little bit. Okay, so uh, it looks like after about 10, 15 minutes of boiling pretty steadily, that chicken is going to be cooked by now. Um, and so here comes the part where, even though we said earlier that we weren't going to be pedantic or condescending about anything in this, uh, in this video, uh, we do have to point out that even though there are people out there who absolutely abhor the idea of eating, gum uh, eating uh, okra in their gumbo, um, we're, we're still purists, uh, you know, we really think that it ought to go in there. Um, as everybody knows, the, uh, the word for, uh, gumbo itself is derived from a West African word for okra. So it just doesn't make any sense to us that, you know, you could actually have something called gumbo without at least making an effort to put some kind of okra in there at some point. Um, so yeah, uh, we have to do it. In you go. And that's going to be the last thing that you put in there. Um, that's another good point about this is that you, you usually add the okra last uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it just doesn't need to cook as long as the other ingredients. And the other thing is okra goes a long way towards thickening the gumbo and really adding back in, uh, you know, some, some of that. Because we've thinned it out with a lot of stock and water. And at this point, you really want it to, like, you know, have a little bit more body to it. And the best way to do that is to let the okra cook down a little bit and slime up, as they say. And uh, that kind of adds the final texture to it. So we're going we're gonna to let this cook a little bit. And then we'll be back with the finish. Okay, let's see. <laughs> yep, that's, uh, that's a pot of gumbo. Um, again, not a whole lot of earth-shattering information here. But uh, the two things that we did point out that were most important were one, uh, you absolutely positively have to have okra in your gumbo. Um, number two, uh, if you aren't entirely certain whether or not the stock you're using is made out of turkey or chicken or possibly seafood, it's probably a good idea to warn your guests um, if they happen to have any uh, issues with that. Um, 
The other thing is, do whatever the hell you want. It doesn't really matter. Uh, everybody knows how to do this. This is the way we did it today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and yeah, that is the recipe minute. Ding. We didn't, we didn't get that in under a minute, did we? God damn it.